Hello. Today I'll be reviewing every game from the humble Fight for Racial Justice bundle. Before I start, I wanted to take a moment to honour those who have lost their lives to, and those who have, and unfortunately still are, a victim of racial injustice. I ask for you all to take a minute out of your day to check the link below for ways to fight out against this issue which impacts so many. Although many of us do not experience racial injustice in our everyday lives, I believe that we can all help. And now, let's start the review. This bundle features 49 games from a variety of genres. Due to time constraints, I have spent 10 to 15 minutes playing each game. I will give an overview of the game along with my quick thoughts on each one. This bundle also features a variety of comics, audiobooks and ebooks. However, this review will be solely focused on the games. Furthermore, all of these games were included in the bundle due to the generosity of the developers and publishers. Although I will be critiquing the games, I still respect this incredible gesture by all involved. Baba Is You is an indie game with a very clever puzzle mechanic. By manipulating blocks of words through a top-down view of the world, the properties of objects change. This is a hard one to explain, but a good example is that by changing the word block of push from rock to lava, I was actually able to push the lava away, allowing me to get through. The overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam show that this puzzler is not to be overlooked. Baba is good. Hyperlight Drifter is an action-adventure game. The game has both a gorgeous atmospheric synth soundtrack and pixel art style. From the introduction alone, the story is very abstract. Controls are simple, and this works well. I don't have to worry about quickly timed combos, just firing, dashing and slashing. I need to play more of this to explore more of the detailed environments and the abstract story. This is a definite recommendation, not just for its incredible soundtrack. Next up is Jackbox Party Pack 4, the fourth game in the interactive series. If you've never heard of Jackbox, these games are great. By sharing your screen, users can connect to the game on their phone to answer questions. These games are good for a family Zoom meeting, as a breakaway from the usual quizzes. This pack features five games, and offer the funny narration and questions that will definitely cause some laughs. I played a bit of Fibbage Free with some friends online, and we all had a good time. If you've got eager friends to play with, then this is a perfect party game. However, if you play alone, there's no single player at all. Spelunky is a platformer that is best played with a methodological approach. By collecting and utilising items such as bombs, you must reach the door at the end of the level. Because I could only play for 15 minutes, I was only able to play the single player tutorial, however there is also couch co-op. Movement is slow, but this allows a planned approach of how to traverse the level. It's very easy to take damage from seemingly harmless enemies, and there's a limit on the number of bombs and grappling rope so I did find myself stuck at the bottom of a self-created crater. I was surprised to discover that this game is in fact a roguelike and permadeath can cause a restart, with only shortcuts remaining in the next run. I've heard good things about this, and may attempt a single run with this game, however roguelikes are my favourite genre. Football Manager 2020 is a, well, you guessed it, a British football manager. First off, I'm not a fan of football, but still, for the purpose of the review, I gave it a go. First I created my character, and decided to do the 3D face scan, and oh my goodness, that is horrible, change it now! Once I'd made a somewhat human character, it was on to the actual management side. I chose the first team on the list, and entered the game. The general interface is surprisingly realistic, and there's a lot of depth and systems. Maybe to add to this realism, the devs decided not to add any music or ambience, so a playlist along the side to listen to is a must. The basic structure of this game is responding to team-related emails, managing team formations, etc. There are some text tutorials to help guide you through, but it is still quite overwhelming for a new user. Eventually there are some simulated matches featuring the teams that you manage. Still, if I watch a tutorial on YouTube, I'd like to check this out a bit more, and maybe even watch one of the matches. Kerbal Space Program is a physics-based space simulator. Players can custom build and then launch their own rockets. I played the first two tutorials to give myself a refresh on the basics, as I'd already played and enjoyed the game in a previous monthly a couple years back. 
This game has a lot of granular aspects, however, it is still approachable to newcomers. I built a very basic rocket and then launched it into the sky. I could fully pilot the vessel, changing the pitch, roll and yaw, eventually using a parachute to lower the Kerbal to safety. I'd recommend going through the tutorials and then looking at the other modes to see what takes your interest. There are campaigns, a career mode, or even a sandbox. If you like vehicle construction or game set in space, or even if you've never played something like this before, this is an easy recommendation. Titan Quest is an action RPG set in a mythological world. I created a very basic character and then arrived at a town under attack. Movement and combat is basic, pressing on where you want to go and who you want to fight. For some reason, I could not master this combat. I died very easily, even when I bought an upgraded axe. The slow movement and basic combat isn't for me, but still, if a Diablo-esque game set in the mythological lands of Greece interests you, then you should take a look. The next game, Observer, is a cyberpunk game where you play as a police officer investigating a murder. The environment here is very good suitably dystopian, with neon lights illuminating the corrupt and dirty streets. Likewise, good audio design and narration pairs well with the environment to produce a futuristic ambiance. Graphically, this is an excellent game, with nice reflections and effects. A future remake of the game promises ray tracing, and although a free upgrade hasn't been confirmed, I bet this game would look incredible with my RTX card. Although I have only started my investigation into the murder, I already have access to abilities that allow me to see technological details and x-rays. I look forward to returning to this. Next up is NBA 2K20, the latest version of the NBA video game series. To begin this review, I need to say that I am not a fan of sports games or basketball. I started by creating my character in the career mode and was impressed by the level of customization. However, before I began, there was an unskippable video of why NBA's character customization is the best ever yet. This was annoying. I'm playing your game right now. Don't tell me how good it is. I'm trying to see if I like it. Still, basketball action was fun, although I probably should have done a tutorial first. Commentary and stadium noise are all expected from a AAA sports game. The game hasn't totally changed my opinions on sports games, but if you've got the time and space for an 80GB download, and especially if you're a fan of the NBA, then give it a try. Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing is a kart racer from 2010. First off, it's very clear that this game is a decade old. The resolution, environment effects and graphics are very low quality. However, the track designs themselves are great featuring layouts from a variety of Sega games. Like Mario Kart, items can be used to give boosts or attack other Sega racers. As well as this, there's an announcer who commentates the game. It's a very standard kart racer, but I enjoyed the experience due to the cool Sega theme tracks. Still, like I've said before, this game does show its age, and I'd recommend playing a new game from the Sonic Racing series, or just keep with Mario Kart. Faster Than Light is a spaceship management roguelike. By controlling crew activities and allocating power to different ship components, you must escape from an enemy force towards the exit. I really enjoyed this one. Although there's a lot going on, the basics are quite easy to learn. I played the tutorial and then started a game. On my first jump, I arrived at an enemy ship who wanted to steal one of my crew. I said no and instead fought them. Although I eventually shot down their shield and blew up the ship, it was too late. They had destroyed my oxygen supply, and it was game over. It was game over so soon, because this game is a roguelike. Previously I've said that I'm not a massive fan of roguelikes, but this game has convinced me to give it another go. I'm definitely going to try another run with this. Bioshock The Collection is a remaster of the Bioshock Trilogy. Firstly, I need to admit that I really struggle with playing horror games. For the review, I played some of the first game. After a plane crash in the middle of the ocean, I arrived at a lift which took me to Rapture, a corrupt steampunk underwater city. Although this game may not be classed as a straight up horror, the enemy design is definitely off-putting. The graphics of this remaster looks excellent, and the atmosphere is successfully chilling. Despite this game being from a genre that I'm not a typically a fan of, the detailed steampunk architecture and eerie story makes me want to return.
This war of mine is a war survival game inspired by real events. At first, I wasn't too enthusiastic as I gathered supplies in the house during the day. When night came, the game changed for me. At night, you can send civilians to scavenge and steal from nearby houses. When exploring these houses, more stories from the war can be discovered, and supplies can be collected. The art style, narrative, and music are suitably bleak, to emphasise the seriousness of the horrors of war. With some more playtime, I bet there'd be some challenging dilemmas. Who do I send out into danger? Who gets a limited medicine? This is an excellent game, although I don't think I'll return to something this bleak so soon. Endless Space is a turn-based strategy game set in, well, you guessed it, space. The game starts with a brief cutscene showing the turmoil of a civilization under galactic rule. I really don't feel like I can give this a fair review. There are so many different menus that I just couldn't explore it all. Add to that some lengthy text tutorials, and I was overwhelmed at the start. Graphics are okay for a 2012 game, and there's definitely some nice music. If you're a fan of strategy games like this, it may be worth a look, but I think if you already like these types of games, then you probably own newer, better titles. Armello is a digital board game set in an anamorphic mythical universe. As someone who enjoys playing board games with others, I really, really like this game. Navigation is action point based, with different obstacles taking different number of points. Abilities from cards are combined with dice when battling enemies. Different sides of the die give either an attack or a defence, with some slight variations. General design here is good too, with a nice art style and fluid animation. There's definitely more to this game than I need to discover, but from the start that I've played, this is something I can't wait to get back into. Age of Wonders 3 is a civilization style fantasy game produced by Drama Giant's Paradox. This developer knows what they're doing with these types of games. However, like Endless Space, I just couldn't enjoy this one. I was confused by the tutorials which gave me some guidance and then suddenly stopped telling me what to do. I had troops, but I couldn't send them out. Apparently I had explorers, but I couldn't send them on an expedition either. If you have the time to look at a different tutorial, then the very positive reviews on Steam show that this is a good game for fans of the genre. This next game, Overlord 2, really surprised me. It's a single player game where you control a Dark Master and their minions. I found it very enjoyable. By using the right stick, I could send my minions to attack certain enemies or perform certain actions. Although I've never played Pikmin, people have compared Overlord 2 to this. The humour is quite funny here, and it's great to create chaos all over the town. For an 11 year old game, graphics really hold up. This is definitely a hidden gem for me, and I'll definitely return. Surviving Mars is a city builder in space. I've liked what I've played so far, but I think there's more to the game than I've seen. The tutorial works well, with interactive guidance. My favourite part is the detail on both the massive map and tiny drones. I can instantly zoom in from an entire planet's view towards an incredibly detailed tiny drone. It's fairly basic in terms of city buildings. Place a building, wait for it to be built, assign power, and collect resources. The main goal is keeping the colonists alive, and unlike a game like Frostpunk, the tone is optimistic. It's approachable for newcomers, but should still interest previous fans of city builders, like me. Kingdom Classic is the original entry in the Kingdom series. I didn't know much about this game before I played, but found the experience very enjoyable. It's a chill game, which only uses the arrow or WASD keys. I started as a king, entering a new kingdom. Coins which can be collected in chests across the world can be given to villagers in return for their allegiance. Gameplay seems to not really change from there, but it's a very relaxing game, just taking in the gorgeous pixel art. I say it's relaxing, but 10 minutes in, I'd run out of all my coins and my crown was robbed, leading to a game over. This seemed entirely fair, as I'd given too many coins out, even hiding some of them in trees. I also own the follow-up, Kingdom New Lands, which adds new content to the base game. If you're looking for a game where you can sit back a bit and not have to worry about health levels or large side quests, this would be a great game to pick up. Eastside Hockey Manager is a game similar to Football Manager, in which you manage one of many hockey teams from across the world. I wasn't a fan of hockey before the game, 
and after playing, I'm still not a fan. There's a lot of menus and in-depth customization. however, I found the overall game surprisingly outdated. This one's not for me, but fans of hockey or sports management may find some enjoyment. Gonna is an abstract platforming roguelite with a focus on colour and sound. Its abstract art style is very unique, however, I think its abstractism is also one of its downfalls. There are a few aspects such as purple dye in the top left and skills in the top right that I was not sure what their function is. I've only played a very small bit, so this may be explained in the future. Overall, the art style and music really raise this above other roguelites and the abstract nature gives an intrigue to explore the purpose of certain elements. Although I won't be investing hours into another roguelite, it's definitely worth playing a little bit just to experience some of the unique art and music. Rabbit with martial art fights. No, you didn't mishear that. This is a description of overgrowth. There's a few different campaigns to choose from, and although there is a basic story, the focus is on combat. By combining different mouse clicks, punches are thrown with hilarious ragdoll mechanics. Combat is a bit confusing at first, as combos are often a result of me spamming the left click in hopes for success. Movement is great, and hitting the spacebar leads to a massive leap over the game world. The absolute size of these leaps, however, did often lead me to overstep a platforming element, launching myself way over my objective. Still, this rabbit-based fighter is definitely worth a punch. Company of Heroes 2 is a World War II real-time strategy. This is your standard strategy fare. Choose troops, assign orders, and watch the ensuing battle. I'm not a fan of this style of strategy games, but this basic gameplay isn't bad by any means. There's a lengthy campaign as well as multiplayer. The tutorial was well done, giving me a real game scenario and guiding me with clear checkpoints. For fans of this genre, Company of Heroes 2 has good reviews, and those interested in this style of game will be quickly taught the basic mechanics. Nevertheless, as someone who does not like this genre, I've uninstalled the game. The Ball is a first-person action puzzler where you use a metal destructive ball to solve puzzles. When I started this one, I was expecting something similar to Rock of Ages. Instead, an electronic hammer can be used to hit the ball in certain directions. For a 10-year-old game, this looks great, and I found the overall ball mechanic very inventive. The ball can be guided to hit certain buttons to unlock new doors in order to progress. From the Steam page, it seems that the ball can also be used for combat. However, I have not progressed onto that stage yet. This one was a pleasant surprise, and I suggest you take a look. Super Time Force Ultra is a pixel platformer with a unique twist. This game features a very special mechanic, time travel. Instead of dying and restarting a level, it's possible to time travel to summon in a new hero. This method means that numerous heroes can be fighting at once. There's some funny humour, and the pixel art is well detailed. The time travel mechanic takes some time to get used to, and I was confused at first. But after playing a bit longer, it makes a lot more sense. For those who like something different in their platformers, this is a great game. This bundle features the first two games from the System Shock series. I've never heard of these games before I played, so my experience was brand new. Both games are 3D in first person, and set in a futuristic environment. Of course I played the original first, and found it quite outdated. There was too much interface blocking the screen, and a tutorial would have been appreciated. The second game was much better in my opinion. It builds upon the first game, and the UI no longer takes up the entire screen. Instead, objects can be collected with right-click, and then the interface can be opened by using Tab. It's clear that both these games have been highly influential on the games industry, but I'd prefer to play one of the games they've influenced, such as Bioshock, instead of this. Broken Age is a point-and-click game by Double Fine Productions. I'm a massive fan of point-and-click games, and this one seriously impressed me. It's got some beautiful art, a whimsical but much darker than expected story, and some stellar voiceovers. The puzzles so far have been a slight challenge, but not infuriatingly complex. I'm very intrigued to see where the story goes in this one. This is a definite bundle highlight. Newt One is a music-based platformer, apparently. I say apparently, as I was unable to launch the game, as I had the error executable missing. Despite me reinstalling and verifying the Steam files, the problem persisted, so I am unable to review this.
All You Can Eat is a point-and-click game which takes place in a classic newspaper comic format. I won't give away any story details, as this is a quick 20-minute experience, best played without prior knowledge. The comic book nature works very well, and although the story is relatively simple, it's absolutely worth your time. The next game is A New Beginning, a cinematic point-and-click adventure. The game is 10 years old, and it shows. Although the art holds up, the animations and overall resolution is quite poor. In terms of story, it's the end of the world, and of course that needs to be prevented. The length is reportedly around 12 hours, and cutscenes are shown in a cool graphic novel style. Overall puzzles are simple and common for point-and-click games. The story seems like it will open up a bit, but I'm not ready to play another 12-hour point-and-click. No Time To Explain is a 2D platformer with a laser beam control mechanic. By firing a laser, my player blasted across levels, avoiding obstacles whilst listening to the screams of the suffering from my future self. The overall humour in both dialogue and overall design is good. Apparently the main game takes about 3 hours to complete, so if you're wanting a shorter platformer, then give this a go. Knights of Pen and Paper 2 is a game with basic gameplay similar to real life pen and paper RPGs, such as Dungeons and Dragons. I created my party by customising two characters' attributes, then it was straight into the action. The game is turn based and completing quests give XP to unlock new upgrades. The pixel art environments are well detailed, and the overall UI is easy to use. I'm currently not looking to start a new RPG like this, but if you're wanting a new game with quests and upgrades galore, take a look at this. Starcrossed is an arcade game with an emphasis on co-op. I was unable to play this one with others, so played the single player only. The main mechanic is simple. Two characters are tethered together and pass a star towards each other. Enemies between the heroes are thus destroyed and progress is made. I'm not a fan of the aesthetic for this game, but the core gameplay worked well enough. It's a relatively new game from this year, and if the overall style of the game interests you, there's fun to be had. Next up is Vertiginous Golf, a steampunk mini golf game. This game supports local and online multiplayer, but I only played the single player. It's basic golf mechanics, line up the shot, adjust the power and hope for the best. The steampunk levels provide cool obstacles made up of copper machines. There are some campaigns or the option to play or make user created levels. It's a chill game, best played whilst listening to a podcast or watching YouTube on another monitor. I played the first course of the dev created levels and enjoyed it very much. I'll return to play a few more courses. Earth Knight is an abstract endless runner unlike any other game I've played. Similar to games like Super Mario Run, the characters run to the end goal by constantly moving forward, collecting treasure and destroying enemies. This is where the comparison to other games stop. At the end of the level is Dragon's Head, which is then attacked with a sword. Once the dragon is defeated, I began to skydive. The idea, I think, is to dodge the dragons below and reach Earth. Both parts of this game, the platforming and the 3D skydiving, are done well. When I finally died, it's a complete restart and progress is reset. I enjoyed my first couple of goes of this and think everyone should at least play it once, as the abstract art and overall idea is very original. Plunge is a puzzle roguelike with an incredible art style. The idea is to escape prison by escaping from different floors. To escape, a key must be picked up from an isometric grid. There are some enemies to fight which can be attacked by sliding into them. Fighting is turn based, so enemies will attack after they've been hit, unless you kill them before they get the chance. I've already said this art style is incredible, but the overall design feels very unique and the black and white works really well with the few uses of colour. Music is also very good. After death, it's time to restart, but it doesn't take too long to fail the puzzle, so the roguelike nature isn't a problem. This was a surprise. PesterQuest is a series of visual novels set in the HiveSwap slash HomeSwap universe. To begin with, I've only played a little of HiveSwap Act 1 a couple years back. Because of this, I don't understand any of the references or characters that this game refers to. From what I can tell, 
The idea is that each of the 14 volumes revolves around making friends with a character from one of the other games in the universe. I played the first volume and found the dialogue quite clever and funny. However, as someone who typically doesn't enjoy visual novels and does not have knowledge of the game's universe and characters, I won't be returning. If you're a fan of the Hive Swap and Home Swap games, this is the newest game in the series and has overwhelmingly positive reviews. Controlling a country is something everyone wants to try, and Real Politics lets you do just that. It's a grand strategy game with lots of micromanagement. I tried starting the tutorial, but even after I completed one of the tutorial goals, it would not let me continue with the tutorial. Because of this, I went straight into a game, and there's a lot going on with country relations, policies, and political systems to name a few. I'm a fan of modern politics, so I may take another look at this and see if there's a video tutorial online. A Light Dangerous is an open world space simulator from Frontier Developments. I've wanted this one for a while, so I was very happy when this was included in the bundle. I've only played half an hour of the tutorial, which included how to steer and basic combat. First off, controlling the ship can be very hard and disorientating at first. However, after a bit of playing, it's a bit easier to control. Just be prepared to go spiralling off course the first time you play. The space environments and cockpit are very immersive. Although I haven't started any online play, I'm looking forward to encountering new ships across the galaxy. It's a game very supported by the developers, with constant updates and communication from them. I can't wait to finish the tutorial so I can start the main game. My Memory of Us is a 2D game that mimics a fairy tale story. The game sets place in Nazi Germany, however, the Nazi party are replaced by robots, which, in my opinion, is a technique used to show a child's view on war. The art style here is lovely, and colour has been carefully used to only include red and black and white. The main gameplay is solving basic puzzles by switching between the boy and girl. As well as this, there's a few mini-games scattered in between the platforming sections. I'm very interested to see where this roughly 4 hour game takes me, and can't wait to return. Mirror Moon is an abstract puzzle game, and boy is this abstract. There's no tutorials given, and you entered into a colourful planet. To be honest, I'm not sure what's happening. I collected upgrades from a few places on the planet, but unsure what I could do with them. Eventually I could drag the big moon in the sky, away from the light source, and the game became a lot brighter. There's also a nice atmospheric space soundtrack, but abstract games like this just aren't for me, and I prefer a little more guidance. If you want to try out something a bit different, then give this a quick install, it's a very small file size. Next up is In Between, a story based gravitational platformer. The game follows a dying man as he accounts his life throughout the various levels. It's a very artistic game, with narration and a dark art style. By using the right stick on my controller, the direction of the character moved, making him walk on walls upside down and to the side. I recently played Horus, which also deals with this gravity mechanic. Whilst Horus can have fast, quick movement, in between is much slower. The only way to move direction is by standing on a platform. There's no turns in midair. Gamers who like a good story in their platformers will find fun from this. Gunscape is a first person shooter in which you can both create and play levels. There's local co op or online multiplayer and a choice from many game modes. The overall art style mimics classic first-person shooters, such as the original Doom games. I found creating a level to be very intuitive, with lots of similarities to building in Minecraft. The game version included in this bundle grants access to the standard edition, which includes the building packs. These are not included in the free-to-play version. I enjoyed playing a bit of the campaign, but focused most of my time on the map maker. I made a small futuristic room and added a rocket launcher and a dinosaur. I was impressed by this, but unless I can find some other friends to play with, I don't think I'll return. The next game is probably best described as a visual novel set in a futuristic taxi. In my opinion, the most important aspect of a novel like this is its story, and unfortunately this one didn't hook me in from the start. Your character is moving into a new city to meet up with their best friend. The dialogue choices weren't too different from one another, although there is a cool interface which shows the anger levels. 
On the other hand, the overall aesthetic and cell shaded graphics which are illuminated by neon lights are beautiful. If you like visual novels, then this should definitely pique your interest, but unfortunately, its story isn't for me. Regular Human Basketball is a basketball game with controllable robots. Unfortunately, this one is multiplayer only, so I cannot play and review. It's got very positive reviews on Steam, so if you've got some friends to join you, take a look. Planet of the Eyes is a narrative platformer set in space. The focus here is definitely on story as opposed to challenge. Audio logs are scattered across the game, which give detail to who you are and what you're doing. Puzzles are simple, mostly consisting of moving objects. The environments are comprised of several layers of different colour, which makes an overall good look. According to how long to beat, this takes about an hour and a half. I'll definitely sit down to finish this. Crown Takers is a turn-based RPG. I began my story as the illegitimate son of a captured king, and the idea is to traverse hexagonal levels to rescue the king. I played a few runs and died twice whilst attacking wolves. Once I died, it was a complete restart, as this one is another roguelike. If you like RPGs and turn-based combat, then take a look. However, I personally won't be returning. Framed is a puzzle spy game with an innovative gameplay mechanic. The game mimics a comic book strip, and panels can be switched places in order for your character, a spy, to reach the end panel on the page. Arranging a different order of panels allow me to avoid the police and escape with a briefcase. It is a very stylish and innovative game, with a James Bond style soundtrack. The Framed collection includes both the first and second game, but I just played some of the original. It's relatively short and worth a go. If you can't tell already, then I've got nothing but positive praise for the bundle. All of the games here have given me some level of enjoyment, even if I won't be returning. There's some definite highlights here, such as Elite Dangerous, Baba Is You, Armello, Jackbox Party Pack 4, and Hyperlight Drifter. Donate to charity and get some awesome games. You can't go wrong here. Thank you to Double Chris for supporting me on Patreon. These bundle reviews take hours and hours to produce and this one took especially long, with almost 50 games to review. Support on Patreon is much appreciated. There's a link to my Patreon below if you'd like to help out, but please prioritise donating to charity if you can. Thanks for watching.